Well, welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. Very happy to welcome back Christy Peters from the American Red Cross. Good morning, Christy. Good morning. So you haven't been busy at all the last, you know, three or four months, right? <laughs> no, 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 I've had nothing to do. <laughs> it's too bad. Um, we kid, of course. Wow, what on earth happened? And I cannot even imagine how it has affected the Red Cross and how how you serve and the number of people and who you are serving. So let's talk about all of that. Um, first of all, how are you doing personally? How did how have you been getting along and how did you get through it? And I guess we're not done with it, but through that, the real hard part where we were all hunkered down, how did you do? You know what? Um, I was very fortunate to be able to be home and do okay and continue to work, which was really a huge blessing. And so I'm doing good. Um, I think that my four-year-old is starting to get a little stir crazy, mm. and it's, I'm, I'm very happy for warm weather so that yes. he can get outside and run off all that energy that's been building up for two months. Did COVID affect the kinds of services that people needed? You know, from the American Red Cross perspective, uh, the need for blood and the service to our community never stopped. Mm -hmm. So when COVID first started to happen, unfortunately, we saw thousands of blood drives cancel across the country. Mm. Um, Obviously, once schools closed and once businesses started sending their workers home, that meant the cancellation of blood drives. And so we saw a huge impact just in terms of not being able to collect the amount of blood that we normally would. So I'm guessing there we have kind of a shortage that we're dealing with right now? So, yes, right now we do have an urgent need for blood donors. Um, We saw a wonderful response at the beginning of COVID. So many people came out to give when we put out the call. Unfortunately, it's summer, and even though it's a different summer than it's been, I guess, in forever, um, we still have a need for blood, and it's still a difficult time just because people are out and they're busy. Some people are starting to travel, maybe just, down the road, but still getting out of their normal routine. And that often means not giving blood as often as they would. And what I keep having to remind myself is COVID is not the only thing happening. People still need blood for all the reasons that they needed blood before. And we just have this COVID on top of everything else that's always been going on. Does that make a difference? That is so true. I mean, there are patients who depend on blood every single week. So they need chronic transfusions. They have a disease such as sickle cell, which requires regular blood transfusions and sometimes more than once a week. Um, You have car accidents Mm. that, yes, Mm. they might not be happening as much, but they're still happening. And those individuals will come into an emergency room and may need a a blood transfusion right away. Those that are fighting cancer um, often will receive platelets after receiving chemotherapy because their platelet counts have been depleted and they will need more platelets. All of those products only come from volunteer donors who come out and give blood on a regular basis. So, yes, those needs continued uh, despite COVID, and they still continue now. So you rely on the people who are regular donors. I'm sure you're always recruiting new donors. What do you need to do or be to be a donor? To donate blood, you have to be at least 17 years old. Um, In the state of Ohio, you can be 16 with parental consent. And there is a form on our website that you can um, download and print off and have your parents sign if you want to donate. But 17 years old, um, you have to weigh at least 110 pounds and be feeling well on the day of your donation. Um, Of course, with COVID-19, we're also asking that if you have been in contact with someone with COVID or you're caring for someone with COVID, um, that you postpone your donation until everyone is well and has completed all of the processes associated with that. Mm -hmm. Um, But Outside of feeling well, we just ask that you bring a donor card or your photo ID when you come to give, and there is no upper age limit, so you can continue to give as long as you're feeling well and healthy. Wow. Well, that calls the next question. Um, When a person gives blood, um, you know, there are needles involved and so forth. How do you keep them safe? How do you keep the next person safe? Um, I'm sure you had to in, start doing uh, some new protocols, although it's always been very, very hygienic. But were there any new protocols that you had to put into place as far as people passing each other even when they're donating? Yes, you know, we realize that it's, it's a somewhat scary time and people are nervous. And we want everyone to know that 
we are doing everything we can to protect not only the donors that come to give, but our staff that are there every day serving, as well as our volunteers. So we have implemented some new safety precautions that we're asking everyone to follow. Um, We are requiring that anyone who comes to donate wear a face covering or mask. If you do not have one when you get to the blood drive, we can provide one for you. Um, You will also have your temperature checked before you enter the blood drive. Um, If you do not meet the temperature threshold, then you will have to postpone your donation. When you come into the drive, we will be having everything spaced six feet apart. So while you're waiting to go into the health history or if you're sitting in the refreshment area, you will be six feet away from everyone around you as well as trying to space out our beds. We have hand sanitizer at all of our locations throughout the drive in all the different areas. And, of course, our staff always um, follows you know, rules about changing gloves often. Mm -hmm. We're also wiping down every donor touch surface after each donor. And of course, the kit that's used to collect your blood donation is is only for you. So every single kit is new for each donor. Um, And that's always been the case with the American Red Cross and our donation processes. But um, you can find out more about the precautions we're taking online. But it really, we've done everything we can to make it as safe as possible. Uh, We are considered essential and we hope that people will feel safe and know and and trust us to take care of them and come out and give blood. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the refreshment area, so you still have that going on. Did you have to do that differently? We have to do that somewhat differently. Um, At some of our blood drives, we have wonderful volunteers who make food or bring food in. Um, The food that we're now providing are single serve packaged snacks that we've always had. So cookies and granola bars and things like that that are prepackaged, single serve. You can take one and leave. Mm -hmm. Nothing open, um, nothing that multiple people would be reaching into, per se, and and taking from. There's no plate of homemade brownies or anything like that? No. We have one drive that always made sloppy joes. I'm going to miss that. Yeah. We we will get back to those days. I I believe <laughs> yeah, right? it. Yes, I hope so. Um, you know, and some people they're just nervous about the process itself because they've never done it. So just walk us through and kind of ease someone's fears. So the entire process takes about an hour from start to finish. Um, as I mentioned, you'll come in and go through those new precautions. Mm-hmm. When you go into our health history, we'll ask you to read some information and then answer questions about. Um, a variety of topics, places you've traveled, medications you might be taking. Uh, once you get through that, we're going to check your temperature again. We're going to check your iron level, and we're going to just check your blood pressure to make sure that you are healthy and well and, and okay to give. The actual donation, which is the part everyone is most nervous about, is the shortest part. It only takes about 10 minutes for some people, even less than that. Um, and then once you're done donating, you'll move into the refreshment area. We just ask that you Sit down for about five minutes, make sure that you're feeling well, get some juice, get some water, and once you feel good, you are welcome to go. So really, it's it's a simple process. I tell people that oftentimes we build it up in our heads to be much worse than it is. Our staff is phenomenal. If you let them know you're a little nervous, they will walk you through. They will talk you through everything they're doing, let you know what's happening, and make sure you have a good experience. With all the precautions, the bad thing about COVID is so many people are non-symptomatic. Do we have a way of getting around that? Do you hang on to their blood until we know for sure, like any kind of time period that they haven't come down with it? Or how do you get around that? So the the COVID-19 is actually transmitted through respiratory droplets. So it's a respiratory disorder. Um, There's been no data and no evidence that COVID-19 can be transfused or transmitted through a blood transfusion. Um, So there is not a concern right now that anyone who may be asymptomatic and donates blood could affect another person, again, because that's not how the disease is transmitted. That's that's such a relief. I'm so glad that you can clarify that. Yes. And so you know, that shouldn't be a concern for anyone who's coming to donate or for anyone who, for some reason, might need a blood transfusion. Um, this is a similar situation that we faced when we were dealing with SARS, which is also a respiratory disorder. So um, because it's respiratory, it's not something that can be transfused or given through the blood transfusion. And why is this so important, Christy? I mean, these are everybody who donates. You're really a hero, aren't you? Because you are making such a difference for someone who needs your blood. Talk to me about that a little bit. You know, I think a lot of people forget that in this age where we kind of have everything at our disposal and it's easy to make something if we need it or get more of it, 
Um, there is no way to manufacture blood. There's no way to get more if we don't have enough. It only comes from the community stepping forward and helping out their fellow community members and uh, those around them. And if we don't have people who are giving on a regular basis, then we can't meet that need. And I've heard so many people say, especially in the midst of all that's happening, you know, I want to do more and I, and I want to help. And this is a really, I guess, easy and quick way that you can give yeah. back and help in your community and all it costs is an hour of your time. And as you mentioned, you will be impacting lives. I mean, mm. there are still needs in hospitals. Um, as hospitals have started back up, and are doing more of surgeries and kind of reducing some of those limitations, we've seen about a 30% increase in the demand for blood. And mm. so the need is there and it's continuing to rise. And so we need more donors to come and give. What's the shelf life? Often when something bad happens, everybody lines right up and gives, and then it might um, kind of, you know, peter out a little bit uh, just because life happens and you get busy with other stuff and you, it just might not be top of the mind. But you're hoping that that blood you gave a couple months ago is still good and can still be used. Um, what is a shelf life? So when you donate your blood, you give one pint, and that pint contains red blood cells, platelets, and plasma. So a hospital might say we want that one pint the way that it is, or they might request that it's separated into its components. Red blood cells last 42 days. Uh, platelets, the ones I was mentioning that often go to cancer patients, mm -hmm. only last five. Platelets are incredibly fragile, and they have a very short shelf life, and so they need to be replenished almost constantly. And then plasma can be frozen for up to a year. Wow. But I will say um, most of the time the blood that's coming into the American Red Cross is going right back out to hospitals. It's not sitting on a shelf waiting to be used. Um, it is being requested and being sent out pretty quickly. Um, but, you know, we do have the ability to preserve some of that as we can. But of course, it's a finite product. And that's why we have to constantly be asking people to keep giving. Mm -hmm. Plasma is the one that we kind of sometimes there are separate places where people are just going in to donate plasma. Are they? I've seen that like next to a store I shop at. There's like a little there's like a little donation place for just plasma. Is that something connected with you? Or is that separate? That is actually separate from the American Red Cross. Um, that's a different type of plasma donation. That's not what the American Red Cross would do. Mm -hmm. um, we do only do our plasma donations at our donation centers. So that's not something you would do maybe at your local church blood drive or yes. your community blood drive. But you can give plasma at our donation centers. Um, in We have one in Cleveland. We have one in Parma. And we have one in Akron. So you do the separating it out. We just go in and they put the little tube in and we can look the other way and, and you take it from there. Yes? and Exactly. And not even me because I am not that skilled. So I <laughs> let someone else do all of that. I let our staff and our manufacturing facility. In fact, if you donated a Red, a Red Cross blood drive here in the Northern Ohio area, whether you're in Canton or Akron or somewhere else, and the same day you donate, it's coming back to our headquarters in Cleveland, and we're going to start processing and sending it out that same day. And then about two to three days later, we're going to get the test results back, and everything, as long as everything looks good, it's going mm -hmm. to be prepped and sent out to hospitals. You make a great spokesperson for it, though. Have you been, oh, well, thanks. Have you been giving blood for a long time? You believe in it. You can tell. Well, you know, to be completely honest, I did not know a lot about blood donation until I started working for the American Red Cross. And then once I started working here, I realized the need and I started donating. And what's been great is all of my friends and family who have heard me talk about it and heard me beg and plead and say, you really need to do this. A lot of them have picked up the habit again. My father, who gave in college, finally started again just um, a few years ago when I started bugging him. So I guess it's something that, like you said, it's not always top of mind. And if you have never needed it or didn't know someone who needed it, you might not even think of it. And oftentimes when I talk to donors or someone who's very passionate, they say, I didn't even realize it until my niece needed to have platelets because she was going through cancer or someone I know was in an accident and needed blood. And now that I know, I want to help and I want to give back. And so that's what we're trying to do is let people know about that need so that they can get involved. And, you know, we have amazing donors that give every 56 days, which is how often you can donate. And we have other wonderful donors to give twice a year. So you don't need to be, you know, out every single month donating mm -hmm. blood. Mm -hmm. Once or twice a year would make a huge difference in just maintaining that local blood supply. Yeah, 
Yeah. We're speaking with Christy Peters from the American Red Cross. Going to take a short break. We'll be back after these words. You're listening to Our Community. Welcome back to Our Community. Susie Thomas having a chat with Christy Peters from the American Red Cross. We're talking about the importance of blood donation uh, during this time of a global pandemic that we're going through. Um, Where can we donate, Christy? Because I think uh, you mentioned a lot of us are used to, you know, the church blood drive or uh, the school or, you know, different places that we're used to being able to see them maybe uh, haven't been open. And so we're not quite sure where to go. No, and that's a great point. Um, You know, we have unfortunately not been able to reschedule as many blood drives as we would like or as we would normally do. So I would tell everyone who's listening that it might be something where you have to go a little bit further than you normally would, or you might have to wait a little bit longer in order to find a drive that's ready. Um, We have lots of local community centers that might be close to the public but have been wonderful enough to open their doors and let us come in. Um, Several local libraries are also doing the same thing. Even though they're closed, they're allowing us to host blood drives. Mm. Um, The best place to go for the most up-to-date list is redcrossblood.org. Um, That website allows you to search by your zip code so you can find something that's near you. You can also always call 1-800-RED-CROSS. And we also have a free blood donor app that you can download to your phone. If you would do everything through your phone, it's a great app to have because you can find the blood drive, schedule your appointment, get reminders, find out when you're eligible again to give, as well as follow your donation and find out that it's being processed or that it's being sent out. Um, So that's just a great way, again, if you like to keep it all in one place on your phone, having that app. Um, But yes, we do still run about 10 to 15 blood drives a day. It just depends on, you know, availability. And um, we're just encouraging everyone to please be patient and understand that we're working in different circumstances, as so many people are, and we're doing our best to make appointments and sites available as quickly as possible. I love that app idea. Can we find that just right off on our phone? We go to the normal old app store and Absolutely. So wherever you get your apps, whether it's the Google Store or the mm-hmm. Apple iTunes Store, you can mm-hmm. just download that for free. It'll pop right up, and you just set up your donor profile, and then you can um, access all of the different features. I like it because it reminds me when I'm eligible, since I can't remember what I did yesterday, <laughs> much less 56 <laughs> days ago. So <laughs> it's a nice little nudge to say, hey, you're doing it's again. time. It's appointment. So that it, is it awesome. Really is what is a great some- asset. What if somebody is listening and they say, you know, I bet we're starting to open up our doors. I would love to start to organize a blood drive. What's involved in getting one set up at their location? Well, we are always looking for sponsors, especially right now. And specifically, if you have an area that would allow us to do safe social distancing. So, you know, we have lots of wonderful spaces that might be available, but unfortunately are not large enough to safely do social distancing. And that really is our concern that we are always safe and that we're following all of the guidelines. And so a space large enough to spread the beds out would be wonderful. But even if you just maybe have a smaller space, that doesn't mean we can't use you as well. Um, Basically, we just need to know that you have about 25 people, what we call an interest list, um, people that are saying, yes, I would be willing to come and do that. You'll work with one of our account managers who will come in, look at your space, make sure that it meets all of the requirements that we need. And then on the day of your blood drive, really, we come in, we set everything up, uh, we run the drive, and then we tear everything down and leave. Really, we're just asking you to help get the word out. So Mm. letting everyone know you're hosting the blood drive, encouraging people to sign up and participate, that's really all that's taken. We just need a place and an enthusiastic person to uh, get all their friends in the door. Yes. So would they call 1-800-RED-CROSS if they were interested they can, in doing that? Or yes, is there another? They okay. Can call, they can call 1-800-RED-CROSS. And then also on redcrossblood.org, um, there actually is a whole tab for host the blood drive. And so you can fill out a quick form on there with your information and someone will contact you and follow up. Perfect. What about the mobile unit? There used to be. Is there still a mobile unit that goes around? Are you using that these days? Right now, we do still have the mobile units. Uh, Right now, we're not using those Mm -hmm. as much, obviously, because of social social distancing. Um, While we can do it, um, it's it's definitely more difficult. And again, we want to make sure that everyone feels safe and comfortable. So as much as possible, we're trying to find spaces that are large enough that can accommodate everyone and follow all of those guidelines. I'm just sure someone's listening, more than someone, many, 
are listening and they're, we've got the space, we can help out. So uh, definitely go to the website and click on host a blood drive. That just couldn't be easier. What types of blood are especially needed, Christy? So right now we need all blood types. Mm -hmm. Um, One type that, of course, is always in high demand is type O negative. O negative is the universal blood type, which means that it can be transfused to anyone. Um, It's often used in emergency situations when a doctor or a physician doesn't know someone's type. They can give them type O blood until they're able to determine what blood type they are. Uh, So we often see a high demand for that from hospitals. So the type O's are important, but it really, all blood types are important. All blood types um, will meet the need of a patient. We encourage anyone who's eligible to come and give. Mm, Great. And then it's important to know your blood type. So when you give, that would be information that you will get if you don't already know. Yes? Absolutely. So if you have that app, it would come through on the app. Otherwise, uh, you would find out through an email probably about six to eight weeks after you donate. Is there any kind that's super rare? There there are types that are less rare in the sense that they don't appear in the population as much. Mm -hmm. And so the AB group um, is one of the more rare types. Um, I think everybody is rare because everybody is needed and everybody has a patient that's depending on them. So you are important to that person who needs your type. Um, What an an awesome answer. (laughs) And there's lots of different ways that you can can contribute. So, for example, there are certain types of blood that are considered the universal platelet donor. So if you are that type, platelets might be something that you want to consider because you are considered universal to those patients. Um, Is that also O negative or is that different? That is different. Um, And I don't know, I should know after all of these years, but I don't know all of the specifics to that. But again, there's a great cool game on the website where you can find out what all the different types are and what they're used for. So um, we talk a lot about uh, the right product for the right patient. And so we really do try as much as possible to encourage people. We want everyone to give and whatever you want to give is great for you. And that's fine. And if, if you want to know more about how your specific type can help in different ways, definitely let us know when you come to give and we can walk you through that. Somebody might have just tuned in and we do want to repeat what requirements, um, because uh, if you're at the right age and weight and and you're healthy, this would be a great habit to start getting into. So take us through that one more time, please. To donate blood, you have to be at least 17 years old. Here in Ohio, you can donate with parental consent. You just have to fill out a form either at the blood drive or prior to coming to give. You need to weigh at least 110 pounds and meet certain height requirements. Uh, There is no upper age limit, and we just ask that you be feeling well on the day of your donation. Um, Of course, if you're not feeling well or if you've been around someone who's been exposed to COVID-19 or you've been caring for someone, obviously we would ask you to postpone that donation until you've completed all the necessary processes and quarantine related to that before you come and donate. I'm wondering if there are certain age groups who just seem to be more... um intentional about doing this? Do you find that? Is there an older population that, well, I even think of, uh, you know, since there's no age limit, World War II veterans or someone that would be super, super aware of this need. Do you find an age group that we're going to need to replace eventually because they've been the real diligent ones? I think exactly what you said. Our older generation, um, as you mentioned, World War II veterans, but that age group, um, they are very dedicated donors. I think they are the people that are coming out every single time that they're eligible. And unfortunately, as we get older, sometimes things change and we have to take certain medications or we're dealing with certain chronic illnesses that would not allow us to donate. And as those individuals get older and face more of those challenges, we need up and replace them. So I'm always trying to encourage young people, and we do do high school and college blood drives. Approximately 20% of the blood we collect comes from high school colleges. I know that a lot of high school kids and a lot of college kids aren't sure what's going to happen in the fall. Um, You know, if you're interested in in doing something in that downtime or you're not quite sure what's going to happen, maybe become a volunteer or look at hosting a blood drive. Those are all ways that you can get involved and and learn about the process and, and give back to your community. But again, start a habit that hopefully will last a lifetime and will help us continue to meet the need as those people that have been giving for so long might not be able to. Mm -hmm. What kind of other volunteer opportunities do you have? 
Right now, we have a new position that was created because of COVID-19, which we're calling the blood screener. So this is the person at the blood drive who is taking the temperatures when people come through the door. Um, This is a forehead scan temperature, so we're not asking you to, you know, do the oral temp or anything like Mm -hmm. that, but you simply Mm -hmm. sit at the blood drive, take someone's temperature, make sure that they're okay and direct them on. That's definitely a position that we need. You know, we are, we have wonderful volunteers across the American Red Cross. Unfortunately, a lot of them are older and they would be considered a high-risk population, so they are not volunteering right now. So we do have a need for more volunteers, not only at blood drives, but as well as on our disaster action team side. So Mm -hmm. these are the individuals who serve on our humanitarian services teams and go out and assist families who've been affected by home fires. Um, Mm -hmm. So if you've ever uh, sadly heard of this or experienced it, if someone does have a home fire, the Red Cross is usually on site to help them find housing and just make sure that they're okay for that evening and then follow up with them. All of that work is done by volunteers. And of course, We've taken new precautions in the midst of COVID to protect those volunteers and those clients as well, but we still need the volunteers. So um, if you are healthy and able and want to give back, there's plenty of opportunities. And again, the website, which is redcross.org, there's a whole tab on volunteering, gives you all the information and talks about the various opportunities Um, that would be a wonderful way that you could help the Red Cross right now as well. You really are on the scene as soon as something happens. And we, again, we need to remind ourselves that COVID-19 is not the only thing going on in the world. There are still personal tragedies, as you mentioned, with house fires or, you know, different countries go through, you know, weather events and different things that can really uh, just wreak havoc in, per- in people's personal lives. And the Red Cross is so awesome to be there. Um, there was a way, and I'm probably asking you something that's not fair, there was a way to donate to the Red Cross often where you just text a number. Does that still take place? Uh, usually after some kind of a disaster, they'll announce. If you text whatever amount to a such and such a number, that'll go straight to the Red Cross. Is that something that's still in place, or does that just happen as the need happens? I believe that it is still in place, but I don't know what the, I want to say it's text give to 90999, but I would encourage people to go to the website and double check me on that before Mm -hmm. they actually do it. I don't want to send anyone's funds to some random place, but you know, (laughs) right in the, in the midst of everything that's going on, you know, people forget we're also right on the cusp of hurricane season. Yes. Uh, We've already seen flooding in um, Michigan had horrible historic flooding in terms of their dams breaking as well as flooding here in Ohio. Uh, We don't see hurricanes, but we definitely respond to hurricanes across the country. And so those disasters won't stop because of COVID. And we're going to need not only people that can help, but funds that can help to rebuild in those communities and just assist all of those individuals who might be affected. So um, disasters don't stop and the Red Cross doesn't stop because of COVID and the caring doesn't stop. So The need is always there for blood. Um, If you're able to give financially, of course, that's a huge help. Mm -hmm. If you want to volunteer to go to those places when those types of disasters happen, um, that's an opportunity as well. So, yes, it's one of those things. It just it just keeps going and you, you keep adjusting and you keep doing what you need to do so that you can meet the need. Great reminder. Do go to the website for the Red Cross or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. Christy Peters, thank you so much for all you do in our community. Thank you so much for having me.